Hi, it's Kelly, and I wanted to show you the work that I'm doing on the last layout in this altered book. I've been working on and showing you uh, the process of some of these pages since uh, last November. So, but we are getting there. I spent most of a day getting just this done. And because I had been working all day, looking, looking, looking for the right thing, when it finally came together, I lost my head and just started gluing. Let's just call it what it is. I started without you. I'm sorry. Having done that, I could see that it was such a such a good background and, and beginning that it would be a good idea to start and back it up and show you how I got there. Now, as always, you don't have to have the same materials that I'm using. We're just talking about the techniques, and then you are going to take them as a jumping off point to use with whatever materials you have at hand. However, if you do like these backgrounds, I have made some high-res scans, and they're on my website. They are also free. After you've seen this, if you want to, you can click on the link in the text below this video, and it will take you to my website where these are waiting for you. Please, while you're there, think about subscribing to my online newsletter. It goes out every two weeks with lots of free and fun stuff. So when I started this, it was actually the back page of a book like this. So it didn't have print on it. It was blank. And I knew I didn't want that. So... I remembered that I had this book of mathematical tables. And I think I got this at a flea market car boot sale for about 10 pence. So good one. And I pulled it out and just glued it on over the black page, blank page. Now, a little bit about covering this binding. This has got a, uh, it's, it's uh, bumpy. That's the technical term. It's bumpy. And a lot of times, if you try to take some paper all the way over that bump, it's just not going to hold. And that's what happened here. It, it bust. So essentially, what I have is a half a page and a half a page. But it's camouflaged really well, and that's just the nature of the irregularities of books and bindings. Now I put that down, glued it, weighted it, and uh, then spent the day trying out different images. So many different things. That's a good story. I love this door. It's going somewhere soon. And you can see that a lot of these layouts are, are really do look good. But none of them just really grab me. And I realize that's because this book already has a lot of engravings in it. It's engraving heavy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the layout just before this one is already using a lot of engraving, a lot of gray work, and I just didn't want them back to back like that. So then I remembered that in the box of animals, I had an otter. Now this guy came from a uh, a science textbook that I got at a flea, nope, secondhand bookstore in Zurich. And that was about $3, but got a lot of cool animals in it. Okay. And I cut it out. He's going to be glued down in a moment. And you could see here that he was fishing. And I really did think about adding that fish here, but uh, it didn't fit. It would have been too scrunched. But it did make me think. 
about fish because I also have these. Uh, these engravings are from Goldsmith's Animated Nature. I have a few copies of this. This edition is from 1876. And I really love these, but I've had them for years and I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to use them. And then when I needed some fish, I thought, ding, ding, ding. Let's try. So... Here's my, my copy of the, the fish page. You know that I love an asymmetrical border that goes across both pages. It holds the layout together so that you don't have page page, you have one canvas. But this wasn't long enough to go over both pages. See? Then I, I thought about just going for it and doing it like that. But back in the day, I tried something like this and I, I was never happy with it. So I knew I didn't want to repeat that mistake. So I just decided to draw this off and make it fit. So I drew it to the dimensions of the page and I'm going to tear that. I'm too impatient to cut. So I'm just going to tear this using my fancy Tim Holtz ruler. Okay. So there's that. And then I wanted to And basically, that's where that was. Which then left this piece that was on the bottom. And now, I did the same thing, except I just rough tore it like this. So that now, there you go. And then this little leftover corner just looked really cool there as well. So I inked up the edges a little bit, not a lot. I didn't want to overwhelm the page. And I glued that down. Now we're ready to start adding an otter. Now, there are several ways that we could have put Mr. Otter on this page. He could be doing that as otters are wont to do. He could be on this side. And this is pretty strong. And I kind of like this because here he's looking into the, the stream of fish. Here he's swimming out where we can't see, but there's a river or an ocean here. And he's headed for new adventures. And a completely different story is told by putting him here. But I am going to put him here. Uh, one of the reasons is because I like the way that the way his body arcs again draws the viewer's eye into this whole page rather than out. Now, I do talk a lot about my old stuff and I do have cool old stuff. But you know what? You don't have to have what I have. I bought these fish at, let's see, at a thrift store in rural Tennessee, in Harriman. It was in a book of angling, uh, field guide to angler kind of thingies. And I think that was like 50 cents and I've used it for years. So there is treasure where you are. It just might be a different kind of treasure. Keep your eyes open. Now let's talk about, I, I, my point is I wanted to use a fish here to kind of anchor this page. So let's see. I thought about this guy for a couple of reasons. One is because he's echoing this line and also the line of the swimming otter. So that was kind of tempting, but it's, it's not really the one. Let's see. 
that looks okay. Let's see. That is, is tempting, but he's actually a little too camouflaged by um, the, the, the lines. Let's see. I, ooh, I don't know where he came from. I am very, very tempted to use this. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Hi. And probably will soon. And again, this came out of a, I think like a gardening magazine or something. So it wasn't very expensive. But I decided to go with this fish here. Okay. Uh, partly because the palette matches that of the coat of the, the otter and uh, some of the fading color of the page, the patina. Also, his expression is priceless. So I am going to... Hmm. I think he goes about, about there. I'm going to go glue that and come back on the other side. And now the layout is finished and it's time to embellish this page. I've already gone around the borders of all of the paper fragments and all of the animals with a charcoal pencil. And then I smudge like crazy. Uh, you can use a smudging tool. I can never find mine. But you can see here that when you smudge the charcoal lines into the edges, you create a, a trick of the eye that gives you some real dimension and makes your page pop. Next, I'm going to add a little bit more color with some handmade walnut ink that I have diluted with water. And I'm just going to give this guy a little bit more of... A little bit more of a messy shadow like this. I've already given the otter one. Okay, so it's not precise. I'm not that good of a painter. Just giving the page a little bit something more to a little messiness on the page to look at. Okay, so finally I'm gonna go round the entire thing with this chunky stick. It is a graphite stick made by Derwent. And I love these things. I would take these to a desert island. I use them a lot. Because not only can you smudge them like this, like this, they are also water soluble and you can also use them as a, a kind of a paint. So uh, I might do a lesson on those soon because I love these. But right now we're just smudging. And you can see what it's done now is to create a kind of a messy frame. And again, all the things that we've done here make the page hold together better as one canvas rather than page page and you have a story a narrative and I don't know what it is but if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and again if you like these images you can go get them for yourself using the link below this video or let me know if you can't find it otherwise please keep in touch uh, ask a question or leave a comment and some feedback until later, get up and go make something.